Well, you can tell from this move by the Toronto Blue Jays, they are clearly buyers ahead of the trade deadline, August 31st trade deadline this year. And very exciting news, Blue Jay fans. They acquired Taiwan Walker from the Seattle Mariners in exchange for a player to be named later. And Taiwan Walker has been around a little bit. He was with Seattle for quite a while. Then he went to Arizona for a few seasons. Then he came back to Seattle this year. This season, he has an ERA of four. But that number, look, people are going to freak out saying, another guy with like a mid ERA of four. You got to realize, if you you look at his starts, he's only had five starts this year. But his first start, he was torched. But the four since then, he has been straight up dominant and against some very good ball teams. You know, he has been very, very good as Taiwan Walker over the last little while. And Blue Jay fans, I think we're going to take a leg into this guy. Obviously, he's a rental player, so that's why he didn't have to give up too much. Ideally, we don't know who the player to be named later is as of yet. But you look at his log, right? Of the last little bit. So, uh, he was bad against the Houston Astros, right? That, that and, and against the Los Angeles Angels. But his other three starts that he had, okay, was against Oakland, where he went seven innings of one-hit ball. Six innings of six hit ball against the Texas Rangers. And then against the Dodgers with seven innings of three run ball. So look, Taiwan Walker is a guy who's going to come in here and he's going to throw strikes. That is something the Blue Jays have struggled with mightily this season. And you look at his numbers this year, guys, in, in a total of 27 innings of work, he has walked eight, or is it 28 innings of work? That's 27 innings pitched, eight walks. It's a very good ratio. He has looked really good this year again. He's had some bad start, a few rough starts, but overall, not bad whatsoever. Again, this is not this is not a guy who's going to come in here and win you 20 games. This, this is not what you expect from a guy like Taiwan Walker. He's going to go out there and he's going to do a job, right? And the thing I like about Walker, Taiwan Walker, 27, 27 innings of work, 25 strikeouts. So almost a strikeout per inning. He's got the strikeout stuff. And the great thing about him is... He, he's going to be very simple to catch if you're if you're Danny Jansen or Reese McGuire, because you look at you look at his arsenal. It's a it's a fastball. He's got the cutter and he's got a split finger fastball. Now, people are like, well, you don't even have any really off speed. Well, look at look at the batting average as bad batting averages against those three pitches against his four seam fastball. It's only ninety two to ninety four miles an hour. It's not an overpowering heater, but if he places it in the right spot, oh, it plays. The opponent's, the opponent's batting average is only 200. Not very good. You look at the opponent's batting average versus his cutter. And this is the thing about that Taiwan Walker. People look, want to look back to previous years and whatnot. And you can. But you look at his arsenal right now and what he is doing. His cutter usage has gone up. His fastball usage has gone down. And that means his fastball is playing more because he's using it less. And his cutter, which has been so dominant this year has a 107 batting average against. That is ridiculous. And then his split finger is a 241 average against, but that's it. He's been very good. And you got Chase, you got to realize, right? Taiwan we all talk about all oh, Ross Atkins Mark Spire not getting the deal done, not getting the job done. But don't trade away our young our young studs, no no grow chance, but no uh, you know, Austin Martin, guys like that. Don't don't you can't move those guys. Right. But if you if you want some big top name, you're gonna have to. And the Jays went out there, and in my opinion, got the best rental pitcher available. The best rental pitcher available for a pretty good price. Now, obviously, we don't know who that is. Uh, Jim Bowden Bowden of uh, of CBS Sports. This was his tweet earlier today at 3.16. According to multiple sources involved on both sides of the Blue Jays' Mariners trade of Taiwan Walker, the, Mar- the, Mar- uh, the Mariners will receive a top 30 prospect from the Blue Jays. Now, before anyone freaks out about that, let me read another tweet. I think this one, was one yeah, this one was from Ken Rosenthal. And he said this, The player the Marlins are acquiring is a minor leaguer who is not part of the 60-man player pool. So... Austin Martin is a part of the player pool. Manoa is. Groshans is. There's lots of players. Simeon Woods Richardson is a, is, a, is part of the player pool. Pearson is part of the player pool. So a lot of the top-notch prospects on the Blue Jays are obviously not going to be moved. Now, 
People who are freaking out saying, well, there's still so many great players there. And there, there are some pretty good ball players there. But you have to give up something to get something, right? Let's look at the top 30 prospects here. Let's go down to the top, to the bottom 20, because that's where I see the trade happening there. Number 20 is Rivlin, uh, Rick, Rick Levin, Rick, Rick, Rick Kelvin DeCastro, shortstop, estimated 2024. 20, He's basically a young guy who hasn't really done anything, and, and you don't really know anything about him too much. Uh, Patrick Murphy is one. He's number 21. Obviously, Anthony Alford was gone. Espinal is probably not going to go because he's, he's, he's on the roster right now. Kevin Smith. I don't know if he's on the 60-man player pool. I'm not too sure. Uh, Thomas Hatch, Julian Merriweather. Will Robertson is a guy that could be moved. He's an outfielder. Played for the Vancouver Canadians last year. He could be a guy that's moved. Riley Adams. Sem Roberts, I think. And Nick Frasso is the guy they drafted this season. So I can't see them moving on from him. Those are the top 20s. They have Deshaun Brown at 19. Estevan Machado, Leonardo Jimenez, Griffin Conan, Otto Lopez, Eric Pardino. I can't see any of those names going uh, in that deal. So if it's in the bottom half of the 20, there's lots of names there that could possibly go. And you look at a guy like Patrick Murphy. I think he's already 25 years of age. Will Roberts is like 22 already in, in Vancouver. And you really don't know what the heck you're going to get from him. So for the Blue Jays, if, they, if that is in fact true and they're giving up a top 30 prospect, it's going to be in that range, I, I'm assuming. And if that's the case... You get Taiwan Walker. If he makes an impact on your team, fine, right? Red Sox fans are probably looking at that Steve Pierce trade right now with Santiago Espinal and seeing, damn, Espinal's a pretty good player for the Blue Jays this year, but we got a World Series MVP and a ring with Steve Pierce. So it all it all depends on how things go that really shows you what type of trade it was. You, you trade away a player to be named later, none of your top guys, I'm assuming, and you got a guy who's going to, if healthy, of course, you know, is going to make an impact on your squad right away. Obviously, Daniel Vogelbach is is not here as of yet, so they got to go through that process. But to make the trade, to get him on the roster, it's a big move for the Blue Jays. They went out there, they made a splash, probably one of the bigger splashes so far in the in the in the trade market, and they got a rental starter. They and arguably the Jays have the money to re-sign a guy like that. But with this rotation, the way it is, and how young it is, right, with with Pearson. Well, obviously not. Ryu is not very young, but you have guys like Kay and Baraki and guys like that who are hoping to win spots next year. I can't see Taiwan Walker coming back now. If he pitches extremely well, who knows? The Jays might offer him a contract because, and he, he'll probably say yes. The way free agency is looking this year and how wonky it is. So, you got a rental guy for now who's going to pitch in your rotation, which this team desperately needed with all the injuries they have sustained. With Trent Thornton being now done for the season, with Shoemaker being week to week, with uh, Nate Pearson being out a little while, you had like two or three bullpen days lined up. You didn't have much going here, right? You needed to add some add some starting pitching depth, and you got that. So anybody who's going to be mad at Shapiro and Atkins, you just can't be. It's impossible to be mad at those guys for this trade. Now, if it doesn't work and you give up a pretty damn good prospect, then yeah, we can talk about it. But... As of right now, it's a player to be named later. You got Taiwan Walker. It's it's fantastic. I can't wait to see him out there in a Jays uniform on the mound. I'm excited to see it. I really am. Now, moving forward, there's some still there's still some moves that the Blue Jays need to make. And if you guys did not listen, do not listen to the Blue Jays banter podcast that myself, Rob, and Mo uh, do on on Blue Jays Center on Instagram. We have the Blue Jays banter is the is the iTunes podcast that we do. Um, go check it out for one. We talked about today about the possible trade candidates for the Blue Jays and kind of what they what they need to look for moving forward. I'm not even going to tell you what we talked about because you guys can go check that out. Blue Jays Center on Instagram, Blue Jays banter on iTunes. All right, now. Blue Jay fans, obviously with the game not happening, same between the Red Sox and Blue Jays uh, at Salem Field because of because of all the stands that that, that uh, professional sports are taking right now. Good on the Blue Jays and Red Sox for doing so. I totally commend them for it. Now, I'm assuming I could I could be totally wrong that the Blue Jays are going to be back in action tomorrow against the boss or against the Baltimore Orioles at Camden Yards, probably starting one of the biggest. Uh, the biggest series of the year. The Jays are a game and a half above the Baltimore Orioles for the final playoff spot. And, you know, there's no one else around us, uh, below us, really. Baltimore is kind of the only team that's even close to us at this point. So you have a four-game set at Salem Field against the Orioles. 
can the Blue Jays go? If the Blue Jays go out there and win three or four or all four games, you look at this and you're like, wow, we got a four and a half game lead or a four game lead or a five game lead on the on the or, or it up being like what four and a half? I think it would be, right? Three and a half, four four and a half. Nonetheless, you can get a huge huge lead in that sense because obviously a short season, three and a half games, four and a half game lead in in, in a division or whatnot or in a, in you know in the standings is huge. And with the, with the acquisition of Taiwan Walker, it's massive. Game one of the series goes tomorrow night, 637 first pitch there at Salem Field. It's supposed to be Hun Jin Ryu on the mound for the Blue Jays against Alex Cobb, assuming Ryu is on the mound tomorrow for the Blue Jays. So it's hey, going to be a great game there tomorrow. Can't wait. And like I said, I would have loved to watch Blue Jay baseball today, but I totally understand, respect, and I'm all for not playing today. All right. So guys, you know what? That is going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video and like the trade for the Blue Jays, smack that like button to appreciate that. Uh, hit the subscribe button if you guys have not already. Comment down below your thoughts on the trade. Do you like the trade? Do you not like the trade? If you like it, tell me why. If you don't like it, tell me why. Let me know in the comments below what your guys' take is on this deal for the Toronto Blue Jays. Twitter is down below for myself. Follow up, send me a DM, do all that great stuff. Also, the Instagram link is down in the description. So if you've not followed up uh, already... Please go do so. The link is in the description. And I will talk to you guys Leafs edition very shortly as this, yes, with, there's, with there being no ball game tonight, I thought it was a perfect time for me to do the Leafs season season review, off-season preview for this year. I'm going to do it very shortly here, so I'll get that out to you guys very soon. As for the Raptors, uh, we assume uh, game one between the Raps and Celtics is going to be going on either, uh, I, don't, I don't think it'll be tomorrow. It'll probably be... Uh, probably Saturday so if that's the case I'm going to try and do a, a round one pre a round two preview tomorrow we'll have to wait and see that once we get a concrete um, idea of when the when the games will get back in action because it seems like they're going to be resuming for sure so we'll have to figure that all out before I let you guys know what's going on and as for the Blue Jays assuming that they play tomorrow 637 first pitch at Salem Field Blue Jays Orioles it, I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be Alex Cobb and Hun Jin Ryu in the mound for the Blue Jays all right so thank you guys so much for listening and watching I hope you guys enjoyed the video talk to you guys then